Now then, are, are the pieces line, all lined up? Let us start a new game with the pieces all lined up once more. Alright guys, welcome back to some more Umi Neko when they cry. Last part we spent some time with Kenzo. A lot of time with Kenzo uh, and Nanjo. They're talking about gambling and, and magic and how when you, 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 you know, you, he's gonna do one last, he's gonna do one last ri ritual. He sees this as a ritual. One last ritual uh, and he's gonna gamble everything. Uh, everything he owns for his last ritual. We already know this, but basically, yeah, he wants to see Beatrice smile one more time. Cool. That's the that's most of last part. Oh, oh yeah, at the start, I guess we did spend some time with uh, Rudolph and trying to figure out Rudolph's business stuff. So that was the start of the part. But yeah, it ended off with with Kinzo, and now we're here with Beatrice. Talking about pieces being lined up for her ritual, I guess, because she's gonna start a new game using this, which I guess is this ritual of hers. Uh, and I guess that it ends up being episode one, I think. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of episode two right now, unlike what I thought it would have been, has been spending time on just setting up things that were, are, you know, that, did, that we didn't see in episode one. But we're clarified on more, right? Like Shannon and George's relationship, Kanon and Jessica, right? We get to see some more of Rosa and Maria. Please let me see more of Rosa. Freaking hell, I want to see more of Rosa. But okay, got to see more of that. We got to see more from Rudolph, right? Uh, hopefully, we get to see more Kiria too. I mean, we just we mostly got to see stuff from Rudolph's perspective, but yeah. And Hideyoshi and Eva, we haven't seen much from them either. We've seen stuff from Eva, sure, because of the George stuff. <clears throat> but we haven't seen much from Hideyoshi and Eva. And most of all, we haven't seen enough from uh, from our boy Cross either. So let's see how this game starting is going to go for Beatrice. And uh, let's see, what, I mean, let's see first things first what she's going to talk about. But yeah. Uh, oh, one more thing before we get right into this. Um, have you guys seen the uh, r slash place that has been going on? You know, the, 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 that subreddit place um, that, is, that started in April Fools. Um, and, and it ended today, actually, earlier on today. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of really cool art, art there, a lot of cool pieces, a lot of cool things. But my favorite thing, you know it, you know it. My favorite thing is the One Piece community. Okay, we came together, united, we put up the Roger Laughed panel up there in beautiful black and white in our slash place. We're there, One Piece fans, we've made our mark, all right? He laughed, one of the most iconic scenes in One Piece, him laughing. You know, usually when we think of I you know, epic scenes or, or one of the best scenes in a, sh in, a sh in a series, usually you go, Oh yeah, uh, when the main character transformed into something, which uh, it, it, it was pretty cool. It, that, that, when that when that happened, that was really cool. But but usually you think of something you know cool like that, or someone doing something I don't know crazy, or uh, this new power up or something, right? When it, it's usually in a serious tone as well. When is someone laughing? Considering a uh, considered an iconic moment, just someone laughing. Someone. Arriving at the last island, at the last island in the One Piece world, and laughing and laughing. That is the the, the pirate king, the pirate king. The, uh, that 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 scene is, is still haunts. It doesn't haunt. It haunts me in a good way. It, it's still on my mind till this day. It's it's incredible. Uh, I wasn't doing reactions to chapters back then, but when I read it, dude, that entire week. Gold Roger, man. Gold Roger. Or should I say, Gold D Roger. Uh, I, sh I, sh I should say that. But yeah, uh, we, there, was, there was also the uh, whole Alabasta. We also marked ourselves there. Uh, or the, the Jolly Roger was there too, right? The Straw Hats. We were there. But I think that, that might have been, uh, you know, botched up by the end. I don't know. But the uh, Alabasta. At the end of the last scene, you know, with the mark, the X mark on the uh, on the forearm there, and them uh, saying goodbye to Vivi, another really good moment from One Piece. We, we, that was a whole like little sidebar, 
uh, that was cool to see. Uh, but there were a bunch of other stuff there, right? I mean, it wasn't just One Piece. There's Osu. There was uh, there was a whole ordeal going with Osu. There was uh, some Star Wars stuff that people said was epic, but I don't care about Star Wars. You guys know me. I don't like Star Wars. I, I know that's a hot take, but I I never liked Star Wars. I watched it as a kid. I was sleeping. I watched it about a, over a year and a half ago or two years ago-ish. Still didn't like it. I watched the fourth movie because people recommended to watch the fourth movie. I did not like it. It's whatever. It's fine. Guys, it's one of my hot takes, right? This is... Uh, let me be. Let me be, I don't like Star Wars. But it was, it, it did get its own shine. Uh, Guts from Berserk was there too. That was, that was good to see. Uh, a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of country flags. Even my country's flag was there. Norway was there, hell yeah, we're repping Norway. Uh, but of course, I, I, I put my focus on One Piece. <laughs> of course I had to. Uh, there was um, Germany. Germany was doing its big things. The blue came back again after five years. The blue, like, random marks. There was a bunch of stuff. So yeah, our slash place. Cool, cool, cool. I don't know when the next time they're gonna do that. Who knows? If they, if, if they, maybe they, they might wait another five years, right? Because last time they did this was it was April Fool's so of 2017, so five years ago. They might do this again in five years' time. In 20, well, that would be 2027. Then by then, holy crap, that's that's a long time from now. 2027. We'll see. We'll see if they decide to do another one of those, one of these then. But uh, you betcha. Uh, actually, around that time, if they do decide to to do another one of those. Around that time, now that I think about it, um, One Piece should be around the ending. Should should be ending around then. I think so. I reckon. If my timeline is correct, I, I know that's incredible. But 2027 is One Piece's 30th anniversary, 30 years. Yeah. So I, I reckon it'll be a good place to end it. 30 year anniversary. That's the year you end One Piece. I reckon you can. You can you, I reckon you could do it. I mean, there's still a lot of plot to wrap up. But we are now at the climax of a really hype arc that has been set up for years. I mean, it has been going on for years. It's been going on for almost five years now. It's been going for over four years. It's in, it's insane. It started in 2017, literally. It's still going. It's still going. Oh my god. But um, we'll see. We'll see how this arc ends. It's gonna end soon. It's gonna end this year. I'm pretty sure. All the said it was gonna end this year. So. This, this one no arc we're on at right that should end this year and then I think we'll have like a mini arc or a small arc where we go to Elbaf or I, I won't spoil one piece but and then and then hopefully hopefully the arc after that we go to the final island and find out that the secret of the world and maybe we'll get to learn what the one piece is maybe that could happen within the next three years I'm not even joking I'm not even joking. I we've been waiting to know what the One Piece is for for me all my life. I've always wanted to know what the One Piece is, and the fact that I, there's a chance that we might already know in the next three, four years, and that One Piece might end in the next five years is incredible. So, yeah. Other than that, not much has been going on. Other than oh yeah, I guess today I did. Um, I actually talked to I talked to someone today who really reminded me of Shannon. It, it, this is this is Minako related, so I decided to talk about this. This has nothing to do with the Reddit stuff anymore. We're done with that. Uh, you know, sh streamers, of course, were, were... Regarding the Reddit topic again. Streamers were playing a big role in the art that eventually showed up there. But okay, back to the topic I was on about now. Before we start the vision of that, I'm about to start soon. But... Um, there was, let me think about it, let me see here, there was a, um, yeah, there was someone I talked to that reminded, reminded me of Shannon in the way she spoke, she spoke in a very soft mattered way, not, not, nothing too loud, you know, the, she, he wasn't, she's not the type of person to, to scream or anything, so I talked to her, um, I didn't even initiate the discussion by the way, she, she came up to me and, was, and, and uh, it was after one of our lectures earlier on today, uh, it was after, let me see, right, it was after the lab, after the lab I did for electrical circuits, yeah, so I, I was I, I was talking to her and we were just talking about, um, about how the course is going, our university course is going, right, it's classic, you know, normal talk uh, between two students in, in the same, same course, and, uh, 
we were talking about basically you know what what uh, subjects we like more right we were talking about uh, uh, chemistry physics math whatever and and she t- and she for example she asked me once uh, what do you prefer physics or chemistry and that was a hard question it's the hard question for me to ask, to answer i i told her oh i like chemistry but i also like physics it's hard for me to decide and she said she prefer, she preferred physics i'm pretty sure but she did only do one year of chemistry while well, i did two right i did i did more chemistry uh, and i also did two years of physics Bef- before this now of course while well, she did she did two years of physics but one year of chemistry uh, so yeah, but we were just talking about that, and the way she spoke, she was very, a lot like Shannon in a way, right? Um, and it's not like, and, and and it's not just the way she spoke that was like Shannon, that reminds me of Shannon, it was also just, uh, you know how Shannon sometimes has these weird, weird remarks, like quirky remarks that just, I think, colorize her personality more than just being... Oh, maid girl that is always super innocent and 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 uh, you know always caring and and always a nice person, right? Sometimes Shannon will will say these things that leave other people not uncomfortable, but she'll she'll crack she can crack jokes sometimes. You, you I, I feel like have you not noticed that? Like when she was talking with Jessica and even with Beatrice too in the in their beach talk, you know, there was there were times when Beatrice went. Why, why are you laughing? Why did you say that? You know, <laughs> so, so there's there's times, and even with with George too. So there's times where Shannon can do her little her little tricky things, and yeah, she, she did that too when we were talking. Um, that so that's that's mainly why it reminded me of Shannon. Uh, probably not the best idea to have uh, actual people, you know, human existing people remind me of visual novel characters, but you know, <laughs> that's that's how it happened. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. If you if you're wondering why we even got to that discussion, we were talking about the university course, but we were going to a chemistry class, and then I started talk, talking about how I really like the class instructor for chemistry. He's actually a really good instructor uh, or professor, I should say. So that's basically where the discussion went. Um, anyway, uh, Shannon is cool character. Uh, she actually, now that I think about it, that girl kind of looks like she doesn't look like Shannon at all. She actually kind of looks like Jessica, you know. She's blonde, of course she is, because Norwegian. Guys, in Nor- where I live, everyone is blonde. Okay, literally. I, I, I mean, nah, nah. Okay, that's not true. There's, there's definitely a lot of people who have you know black hair or such brown hair, stuff like that. But, but, uh, be, be, people who look like Beatrice. I, I, in Norway, everywhere, everywhere, you'll see girls looking like Beatrice. Oh my god, they're flooded, flooded. The pl- the place is flooded. I, I, I don't even know if there's. May, are there any other, other, uh, other than Scandinavia? Are there any other places where you'll you, you'll see this high concentration of just blonde people? Just, you know. Then I th- even think about it. I remember in Japan. I've talk- I feel like I've talked about this too before. In Japan, isn't being blonde considered this, like, just a for- foreign exotic thing? Like, whoa, you know, you must come from America or something, right? Like, whoa, right? Isn't that a whole thing? Because, you know, for, for them, obviously, it's, uh, it- it's it's very... It's not weird, but it's very foreign. It's, it's, not- it's unfamiliar. Which is why when you, when you look at a... Uh, a lot of in a lot of anime f- and manga, I feel like that I, that I've seen, I've, I I see a lot of a lot of bl- a lot of blonde people will just will just come about and be like, oh yeah, I'm an exchange student from the United States, and I'll be like, oh, okay, right, of course of course you are, because I mean it kind of makes sense, especially if the if the plot is supposed to you know occur in Japan, I guess it might it might make sense, but if the plot is in its own original world, like. I mean, okay, to be fair, Umineko does take place in, in Japan, actually, in Rokinjima. But, like, in, in in a lot of stories, you'll have this other world that has not that is, that is no correlation to Japan, and, you know, having... You don't need to have... I guess in Slice of Life and stuff, yeah, whatever. But you don't need to always have the blonde person be this, this exchange student. But I guess it makes sense. So that actually makes you wonder, what... 
the creator of this too, right? Must be Japanese, and and that those sort of th that sort of thing must have uh, affected him too, right? So what was he thinking when he when he went? All right, Beatrice, you're blonde. Jessica's blonde. Cross is blonde. Uh, who else is blonde? Is not anyone else blonde? I don't recognize anyone else as blonde. To be fair, Battle has like what red, red brownish hair, something along those lines. He also has, his hair color is a, is a bit funky too, right? He's playing about. Maria has a similar hair color as Battler. Now I'm wondering how Battler's mother looks like, because he his hair color does not match his dad's hair color. That's for sure. Uh, Rosa's hair color is also, also brown. Not not as red tainted as her daughter's or Battler's, but still brown uh, ish. Um, but yeah. How did you get to her? Oh yeah, I was yeah the, the girl I was talking to. She reminded me. The reason why I mentioned this whole blonde stuff and, uh, is that the girl I was talking to. The reason why she reminded me of Shannon was not because of appearance. She does not look like Shannon. If anything, she looks like Jessica. Except, I don't want to say it. That's rude. That's rude. That's rude. I, I don't want to say it. I don't. Wanna... But uh... <laughs> you know what? You know what? Let's uh, let let's not go that. Uh, let's not go that way. But let's just say she kind of looks like a mix between Jessica and Beatrice here. I mean, it's a real human being. It's hard to say. She kind of has... Okay, she has like the chin of Beatrice, but... And the eyes of Beatrice, but... <sighs> she doesn't have this... Th these bangs and... I mean, she does have bangs, but she doesn't have, have this fancy witch hair that she has. The bad teacher has and this flower. I mean, come, come on now. Uh, I mean, is it called flower? What what are flowers called when you know when you stuck them in on, on, in, in your hair? I don't think they're called flowers anymore. There's there's a word for that, isn't there? For flowers on hair uh, or in hair, whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope she's not watching this. I doubt you. I highly doubt she is. But if she if she is, then it's good. I did. If you're watching this, it's good I didn't go too far. I, I didn't go too far. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I'll leave, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. We'll continue on with the echo when they cry. Uh, besides, to be fair, to be fair, she can't prove that I'm talking about her anyway. Even if she did see this and she thought that and somehow recognizes me here from me in real life, even if she did. She can prove that I'm talking about her. I, like I said, the concentrate, concentration of, of, of blonde women is, is insane here. So, so, I, I could have been talking about any girl. I could have been talking about anyone. I mean, a, a, a lot. A lot of different people. I don't know. Just how does she know? She has no proof that I'm talking to her specifically. So, it's fine. It's fine. And besides, it's a good thing I didn't dig myself into too, too much of a grave. Trying to, trying to, um trying to um, compare not compare but uh, trying to sh trying to describe the similarities between her and Beatrice and, and Jessica so that's why we'll just leave it there anyway we gotta start this part off because these these intros have uh, are becoming longer and longer I've been talking for so much and we barely get any progress each video so let's actually let's actually start reading here uh, now then are the pieces all lined up let us start a new game with the pieces all lined up once more okay all right, here we go. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Now, seriously, seriously, seriously. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start. No, I swear, I swear, I'm gonna start. But I have to do this. This is so important. Thank you guys for 82 subscribers. Okay, thank you. I have to do that. I have to do that. I gained a subscriber since, since I last made a video. I have to thank you. Whoever that one subscriber is, I don't know whether you're watching this or not, but thank you for 82. Thank you for the rest too, right? Uh, we've, we've gained 30, oh, almost 30 subscribers now since I've started doing Mineco videos. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll keep going now. We'll, we'll actually start reading now. Don't worry, we'll actually start reading. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's fine, it's fine. We'll read, we'll read. Alright, let's start a new game. What, me? What, what does she mean by pieces, by the way? Are the pieces all lined up? Does she mean, like, chess pieces? Because I feel like this vision novel has spent a lot of time just... Uh, how do I put it? Metaphoring or describing this 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 game that Beatrice just put up 
in, in a chess board, as if it was a chess game. And we spent a lot of time talking about chess, you know, bit, uh, bit compare, uh, comparing it to, um, to, you know, with the whole Kinzo playing chess with Genji and playing chess with Nanjo. Chess is a big theme in this, and this whole battle of wits thing that was in the letter. Uh, so I wonder. Fun fact about chess, of course, you guys probably know this too, but the, 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 the highest rated and, and the current world champion, the best chess player in the world, you know, we, we, is Magnus Carlsen, a Norwegian person. You know, he's just like me. He's from Tönsberg, actually, so he doesn't really live close to me. That's south from where I live, but, you know, uh, Magnus Carlsen, he, he's, a, he's a good. And, and, he became... He became, I think, the second youngest world chess champion at the young age of 19. He was 19, by the way. So around my age, around my age, he became the world. That's unbelievable. I'm just trying to imagine myself in his shoes and having, not not even about having the skill, but just being known worldwide for being the world's best chess player. And I I know I'm relatively young, right? So I know that. Holy. I'm, I'm the best chess player now and all all the world is praising me for being this amazing chess player That's incredible. I mean now he's like 30 or whatever. He's been He's been a well, chess master since well 2009 2010 so he's been he's, he's been at it for a while and he's still going dude I see clips of him all the time. I see advertisements here all the of course Magnus Carlsen is a big name here in Norway. We we know about him well, so you know I see ads about him in different stuff and he's, he's a big name here and <laughs> It's, it's, it's cool. He also has a, a, little, a funny little personality and uh, <laughs> yeah. his, his smile is very, I don't know, his smile is very unique. I like it. I like his smile. Um, but yeah, a little, fun, a little chess fun fact there. I, I wonder if, if Magnus Carlsen, the, the best, or the current best chess player in the world, would like reading this visual novel. I wonder if he'd enjoy it. I wonder if he'd, I wonder if, he, if he'd look at the chess... Uh, dude, Magnus Carlsen, he'd play this visual novel, he'd go like, he'd, he'd look at the chessboard and go, all right, wh what is what is white doing there? Nah, 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 that's a mistake. Move the pawn there, move the horse there, bang, 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 there we go. Like, he'd actually properly analyze the chessboard and <laughs> try to figure out the best strategy or something. Uh, Seriously though, I've seen some of his matches uh, on TV and stuff. It's insane. I mean, he does his moves so quickly. He was like, bang, 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 dude. He destroyed Kinzo, Kinzo and Nanjo and Genji and got nothing on, on Magnus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all, right, all right, let's keep going. Are there any problems? She says uh, with the with the game you're setting. I've been mean, talking a lot. Okay, okay. Let, let's try to get the story going here. Any problems with what? Nee. Wait! What? <laughs> wait, wait, why is Battler here? Where are we? Wait, where? <laughs> wait, wait, what? Nope. Well, nope. Why is Battler here? Where are we? Is this after he died? Is this after they died? What do you mean the game is lining up? Battler saying nope. Is this after... The conclusion of episode one is she, is she gonna start a new game? Battler says nope. What does he mean by that? What nope? Did did Battler? What? No, that doesn't make sense. What I was gonna say that does not make sense. The, the witch looked at him in in challenge while elegantly smoking her pipe. I, I love st I love the pipe that she smokes and I love that she smokes it. Yes, yes, hell yes. Makes her that much cooler for me. All right. In challenge, Ch is she challenging him? So I guess this is after episode one. So what what's going on with the time right now? I feel like we're skipping forward and back and forward. I don't really know what what's going on right now. Are we after episode one? Before? Uh, and Battler? He just lovingly shrugged his shoulders as though she wasn't worth his time. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Uh, sure. Hmm. He wouldn't look her in the eyes. But that didn't mean he wasn't going to play. Going to play what? What game? Is she gonna set up a new game? But aren't they all dead? What what game are, we, are she starting now? Is this gonna be like Higurashi maybe? Where we go into a, 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 another frag... Frag... Rents... What, what was it? Fra yeah, 
another fragment of the universe of the timeline where episode 1 happens all over again. But now Battler's aware of what's going on, so Battler's gonna try to change the events, the, the events of stuff. That would be interesting if, if it went to that sort of Higurashi route. So the same events of episode 1 is gonna happen, but now Battler's gonna try to prevent it from happening. Something along those lines. Right? Maybe. And maybe she, he'll gain, maybe he'll gain time looping powers like Vika. Nah, but that would be boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be boring. Yeah, now, now you're just using the same plot. Yeah, you should just the same plot, um, plot synopsis from Higurashi. That won't be fun anymore. But I don't know. Certainly, maybe some time stuff is happening. Some universe, universe bending stuff is happening, I guess. She's a witch. She can do some stuff. I don't know, but the power of the universe is love or something. Uh, but that didn't mean he wasn't going to play. It signified his plain determination to never be taken in by the artifices of this being he faced. So he still didn't believe in her, right? It was an expression of his powerful determination to fight. He to fight against her because he still believes she doesn't exist, right? He's playing with her for now, but he doesn't believe she exists. <laughs> I wonder if there's gonna be a big time. I wonder if there's gonna be a pl big plot moment in Imineko in the future where Battler goes, I knew. <laughs> He's gonna be crying and go like, I knew. I knew the entire time. I knew you existed. <laughs> but I, I just couldn't admit it. I was stubborn back then. But now, character development. I'm a different man now. I believe you. And you see, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I don't, you know, I'm talking about. Okay. It's plain to never be taken in by the Okay, sure. Then we don't have a plan. You'll free to take the first move? <laughs> it's, it's, this is like a chess game. See, you know, my, ch my chess game analogy did come true then. It, it is a big theme in this visual novel. Alright. <laughs> okay, this is after episode 1. Okay, cool. That's all I, need to, that's all I wanted to know. This is after the event of episode 1. After the tea party. Battler still doesn't believe in her. This is after he goes, no! And this is after Jessica and George and them get bloody faces and Jessica screams at Battle to not believe in her and that, you know, he was, you, you were the best of us. <laughs> Don't believe in her. I, you can do this, Battler. Uh, okay, okay. I will never believe in you. But that means is this. The way this game is made, you cannot win. Well, she can. She can. Why? Because if you if you start believing in her, she wins. Isn't that isn't that the conditions? Aren't those the conditions? Isn't that the condition? I think I should say. Sorry about that. Maybe you're right. Yeah, that's the thing. That that's how I interpreted it, right? Like. If they only play a single, they, if they only play a single match and Battler still doesn't believe in her, then sure, okay, Beatrice has, all, uh, unless she pulls some crazy trick, she has no chance of winning because Battler all has. But if she can repeat this game for all eternity, I mean, right? Battler's at a disadvantage there because at some point, surely he'll believe, especially if you're going for all eternity, right? If the games literally won't, unless another witch interferes. I guess that's the only thing Battler could hope for. But okay. Burn Castle. Time for you to show up then. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. If, if that's the case, then she actually has the advantage here. This is torment. Until he kisses your toes, right? That's it, that thing? 
Right, that's that's what I was saying. If this continues eternally, you do have the upper hand. Nara, I like his face. Confident battler, I like it. Until you run out of patience. I've never lost in such a battle of wills. So is this a battle of wills or is this a battle of wits or both? This could also because episode one was a battle of wits, right? So I guess is, is episode two a battle of wills? Is that the theme now for episode two? Maybe I mean, depends on how long this battle is gonna last. Is, is this gonna last the entirety of episode two or the entirety of the visual novel? <laughs> is, are they gonna keep doing this game over and over until the end of the visual novel, or is something actually gonna happen to to break this? I wonder. <laughs> I wonder, hmm, who might have done that? <laughs> Thanks, Baron Castle, we appreciate you. Get this started. Let the game begin. That's what you think, but you've only lived for a thousand years. You, you, all you have is experience. I have the the, the power of youth. <laughs> okay, I don't really know where, where I'm going with that one. And he could go to defy me with the same moves. Mm, then offense is the best defense. Maybe we'll go with that one. Beatrice. Oh, he said his name properly and called me. Beatrice. Before we start. What is it? え。貴様の魔法がどれほどのものだったとしても、俺の魂は屈しない。これは俺への拷問だとは。違うね。You're <笑> <laughs> Battle's like, you're wasting your time! <laughs> okay, he spun it back at her. You shall begin that torture. Ooh, I like the way she said that. I like the the the, the passion behind that one. Battle! <laughs> Hell yeah! Okay, that's gonna be a bit pumped now. Nice, good voice. Here we go. Let the, let the game start. Oh, that's the end of the chapter. Sick. That's another chapter I could have ended last part. <laughs> Unfortunate. Unfortunate. October 4th, 1986, 10.45 a.m. Saturday. Shouldn't we be arriving around this time, right? By boat? Right? Something along those lines? Or at least Jessica should be over there in Nijima, awaiting their arrival. Every year, the relatives, so yeah, that means whenever Jessica goes to school, by the way, she has to go by boat every single day and then take a bus or whatever to school. Damn, that, that's kind of, that's kind of harsh, actually. I would not want to, I would not like going to school by boat every day, personally. Uh, that's just me, though. You know, maybe, maybe she likes boats. I don't, I don't remember. At least she's not Battler, who hates boats. Anyway, every year the relatives who visit Rokunjima let out a sigh of admiration at the Rose Garden which first greets them. Oh, okay, so we're back in this Rose Garden thing. 
So yeah, this isn't this around the time Maria does her thing and we meet Kanon? Maria puts her thing around that one flower and then that flower disappears. Um have you the lot to visit okay. Then also, okay. They stood there talking with each other about the rose's beauty and the state of their blooming this year. There was a single unhealthy rose among them, and Maria became overwhelmed with the dejection at its state. Okay, so we've seen this before. We are, we're aware of this this happening. Now, I wonder, this game that Beatrix and Battler have started, are these now the exact same events that are happening in episode 1? Or are these the same events that are happening in episode 1, except now Battler has more knowledge and maybe can choose a different road to go through? Maybe? Maybe that's what this game entails? Because I don't know the details about the game that Beatrix is on about. I don't know the details of anything. I don't really know what's going on fully. But for now, I think I'm going to treat this as still a prequel to what was going on in episode 1. As Or like, we've already seen this happen in episode 1. I mean, this... This is part number whatever in episode 1. So we've already seen this troll stuff. But George used his quick wits and saying she should look after it if she felt that sorry for it. He marked it with a candy wrapper and immediately restored Maria's good mood. Right, we've seen this. And once Battler, with whom she had been getting along well at all morning, raised the subject of Halloween that Maria loved so much, she began playing around energetically again. To Maria, those marshmallow jack-o'-lantern candies that her mother had bought for her were probably a treasure greater than any other. Oh yeah, because she really likes... She loves the, the love of her mother. She loves the love of her mother. That's crazy. That's a sentence. But uh, that's, that's why she wanted to invite her to the Golden Line and everything. But isn't Maria just a natural opponent to Battler, considering she's full-on with the witches and stuff? She's just going to be a natural enemy to Battler, the whole visual novel, I feel like. With that one. We'll see. Or she's going to get in his way. Right? Because she, she's going to side with, with Beatrice. I guarantee you. No matter how well she gets along with Battler now. She's going to side with Beatrice. Right? Um, it seemed that several of them had been bought for her. And she demanded trick or treat from every person she met. Giving them candy instead of the other way around. I don't remember this trick or treat stuff. This Halloween stuff has only showed up now in episode 2. That's interesting. The Because the flower thing we already know. But I guess there is, they decided to omit that on purpose. So that they can introduce the Halloween stuff this time. So, hmm. Wait, she gave them candy? Seven of them have been bought for her. And she demanded trick or treat from April Smith. Giving them candy instead of the other way around. <laughs> Because she loves the occult and stuff. It's spooky and you know, she's into that. Get used to See, that's what she, that's what you think, Jessica. But really, Maria is into some creepy, shady stuff and witches that you're not aware of, and that's where her real love comes from. I guess true. Now that you think, now that I think about it, I do wear mostly the same clothes. I mean, like, the same different t-shirts, you know, and then I wash them and then I wear them again, and, and the same different, the same jacket that I used to go outside with, the same thing. I I don't wear you know unique different costumes that that I can play around with. Neither did I in Halloween either because I didn't really celebrate that either. So it's just yeah, I've, all my life I've just gone with these plain plain t-shirts and clothes. I'm wearing a t-shirt right now as I'm recording this. It's it's just eh, you know it just works. <laughs> I guess there's there might be some fun if I. I don't know, I, I, I don't think I'll ever be a cosplayer, I, that's not my thing, but I guess every so often maybe, who knows, maybe it will, could be a cool change of pace to just wear a different costume, you know, wear, wear something like Battler's wearing right now, you know, I've, I've only, I've never worn something like this in my life, 
<laughs> Maybe. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, you know, we'll, we'll keep it there. I wonder where he finds. Because this is actually a really good fit. I'm not gonna lie. The, the Battlesh wearing is a really good fit. Right? The, the red. The red, you know. Jordan underneath. And then the. I don't know what these are. I think these are part of the uh, the dress here, but. Th this thing and then the tie, the black tie with this. Battler looks really good in this. Now that I think about it. Because Jessica's, to me, just looks like she's wearing her. I mean, this is what she's always wears, but this just looks like her school clothes, right? I mean, the, the white with the, with the red tie and then. It seems like it's just a classic school uniform with the uh, with the crest, with the Ishiromiya crest, which Battler has too. But Battler just. I don't know. There's, there's something about. <laughs> It's, his fit is so much better than a school uniform. This is this is a proper like, you know, this is this is the sort of fit you know I, I, you, you'd actually wear in a wedding type of situation, right? He actually looks good in this. So yeah, I don't remember Battler ever wearing anything different because I guess we have been spending all the time with him in this in this uh, family gathering. So I guess it makes sense. But yeah, now I think about it, why is Jessica just using her school uniform? Eh, you know, I'm not gonna question it too much. Whatever. Mm, See, George looks good in this too, but honestly, the blue, the blue dress fit him so much better. The blue just, the light blue, remember that when he was dating uh, Shannon? I think that's the one, you know. I don't like this yellow, whitish color that he's using, whatever color that's supposed to be. You know, the, the white fits Battler really well. I don't know, with George, it's just kind of... I don't know, he just... His fit just kind of looks a bit uglier, I'm not going to lie. Just a tiny bit. I prefer Battler's fit. Oh, I see now that the the the, the shirt under is matching with the hair. Same thing with Battler's shirt matching with his hair. Being kind of red-brownish. I noticed that just now. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I preferred how George looked like when he was uh, when he was dating Shannon. Same with Shannon. Shannon looked better than too. But I guess that's because she's using maid or servant clothes, whatever. Maid, maid clothes, servant clothes. She's a servant to the Shuma. So I guess it's fine. But I think there's probably a slightly deeper reason, George says. She's Maria chan, the witch. So, yeah. In the house, Maria was. She did. Maria, te. Majo ga suki nanda. You're you're gonna find out, Battler. You're gonna find out. Eh, dai suki yo. I don't have to mention it, do I, guys? I don't have to mention it, do I? It's Rosa. Yes, 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 yes. It's Rosa. She loves witches. Okay. Alright, now, now, you know, I, you know, I don't really mind it, but now I just want her to talk about something that has, that has, that doesn't have something to do with Maria, you know, just, just, just maybe just as a personal thing, I, I love me some Maria talk to you, but, and I know a big topic, I mean, basically, almost all of Rosa has just been her and, and Maria, but there, you know, there's obviously her dressing company and her husband. That sort of, that sort of stuff is going on, and uh, of course the family business issues. So she's involved in that too. But a lot, a good, uh, basically almost all of her chunk of her character is used up on them on the muddiest stuff. So it, I guess it makes sense. But I, I'm still really glad to see her. I'm still really glad to see Rosa again. It's I feel like it's not often we get to see her, so it, it's great. It's great. I, I love this. It's great. It's great to see Rosa again. So much that it becomes a problem. Jessica's saying uh, she did that too, maybe. Hmm? No, wasn't Jessica more into romance? I guess he kind, of, he kind of is still into romance novels and stuff, right? Yeah, like some Powerpuff Girls. Da, 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 da. To be fair, I can admire the Powerpuff Girls myself. <laughs> I think I'd admire them even more if I was the opposite gender, I think. I said I think twice there. But but I reckon I, I, I would've. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe maybe the, the, the difference in 
in in in the in the society that would make me think differently about the Powerpuff Girls. Who knows? I've always thought they were really cool though. I don't know about admire though. If if there's someone I do admire, it has to be Luffy. I mean, it's in my name. I'm in Luffy, so if there's someone I admire, I guess we'll go with that. I mean, m much more so than the Powerpuff Girls, of course. Even when I was younger, but you know. <sighs> Was there any other heroine from a TV, something, not just anime, but anything that I admired when I was young? I guess, uh, I guess I liked watching Kim Possible, but I didn't really admire Kim from Kim Possible that much. I, I didn't really admire her, I thought, just thought, wow, okay, she does crazy cool stuff and stunts and yay, yay. I don't know. I still found Pop of Girls more impressive than her, I'll be honest. Uh, what else? I can't remember much else. Uh, yeah, no, a, a lot of the, a lot of the inspiration just came from Luffy and Goku type, you know. That was a lot of it. Maybe some Spider-Man, right? That sort of thing. I can't think of much of many heroines. I can't think of many uh, of any female characters making that big of an impression on me. I don't... Again, Maria, whatever. We're talking about Maria now, not me. Ha. R Rosa doesn't like that Maria like switches. Judging by Rosa's reactions, it seemed that as a mother, she did not find her daughter's love for witches pleasant. Seemingly, all the, all, all the cousins other than Battler were able to understand this, and they shrugged their shoulders, smiling awkwardly. All the cousins. Other than Battler! Battler's like, what's wrong with liking witches? It's fine. See, lesson learned, lesson learned though from Bimineko. If, uh, let's say in the future I ever have a daughter, lesson learned. First things first, uh, I think this is kind of obvious though. I think this goes without saying, I don't think being this visual novel has, <laughs> has changed this. But, it, well, you know, don't, don't leave for milk. <laughs> the first things first. Step one, don't leave for milk. Second step, uh, if if daughter admires witches and she goes and 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 she makes noises, let her, <laughs> let her. Or when you go to a family gathering, a mysterious power is going to kill you and your entire family. This is what I've learned from Imineko. <laughs> this is what I learned from Rosa's perspective. <laughs> let, let your daughter like with love witches and and don't scold her for going ooh and hopefully hopefully they, they won't they won't seek after this golden land crap and sacrifice all of us for it. Hopefully. I mean, not necessarily. I mean, they are correlated, but they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not necessary. You know, just because you like one does not mean you like the other. Not necessarily. What kind of relationship? Yeah. Hmm. As Battler asked that, George and Jessica let out a small ah noise. <laughs> it seemed they were too late. Oh god, Battler, you asked the wrong question. It almost looked as though Maria had been waiting for that question. Now she's gonna start talking for hours or not, I don't know. After looking happy for an instant, her expression turned a little mean, as if to say, You don't know anything, do you? <laughs> But you fool! It was the expression of an enthusiast who has been enraged by the ignorant statement of an outsider with a wrong impression. Right. Mm. Melody inst ver. Okay, interesting music. The Celt? What are those? Are those a group of people? Thought of the changing strength of the sun over the course of a year. 
一年を通して生まれ育ち老いて死んでそして再びよみがえると考えていたの。Okay, what are Celts? I've never heard of the Celts. And it's then it's revival. Right. なっとくだな。春のか弱いポカポカした太陽がどんどん成長して暑いくらいになり。And then it grows up and then it dies during winter. Okay, get it, cool. 次第に汗を衰えていく様をなるほど太陽の一生と考えるのもうなずけるぜ。I can see how you could think of that as a passing of the sun's life, and then it revives itself again back during spring. Okay. だから彼らは10月の最後に太陽は死に死の国で体を休めて冬至の日に再びよみがえると考えたの。Oh, it, re it revives during winter. Got it. Okay. Not, not spring. Makes sense, actually. <laughs> それで太陽が一年の生涯を終えて死ぬその日を大晦日サビンと呼んでお祝いしたの。Call it New Year's Eve or Samhain or s a b i n She said something along the lines of Samhain. Samhain. But here's the thing.、Uh, she says New Year's Eve in October? So you're saying we're, we're celebrating New Year's Eve too late? After the sun is already about to revive itself again? It's too late? We should, we should, we should celebrate New Year just as the sun dies?、Uh, the day that the sun ends, right? Or is 31st of December our, our interpretation of when the sun ends? <laughs> I don't know, y'all. Futabi Nisho Jikanga Naga Kunaridas, Toji no Hio, Tayo no Fukats no Hito Sur Kanga Katawa, Totemo Moshiro Yone. Start to grow longer again. True. Kodai no Hitobitoga, Ikani Tayo, Shinsei Shitaka Wakaru episode. Hmm. Rev revived, you say?、Hmm. Okay. Naruhodo. Naruhodo. And then? So, I got much of the door, Kanke Garden. What do you witches have to do with this? It seemed that my casual urging forward had slightly infuriated Maria. She, she's going, Let me get to the point. Yeesh, listen to my story. Ooh. She glared at me with eyes that told me to let her explain without interrupting. Okay. Maria looked like she was having fun t e l l me, so I decided not to interrupt. 10月と11月の狭間は生と死が最も近くなる。Okay. ケルト人たちはこの時期に聖者の世界と死者やこの世ならざる者の世界が最も近づき。異界の住人たちがたくさん訪れると信じてたの。So kind of like right now, this is the, this the, are you telling me this is correlated to what happened at during episode one where everyone dies? Is this you, you tell me it's correlated? You tell me there's there's something there? The cells believe that this was the time when the world of the living was at its closest to that of the dead, and on those not of this world. Like the witches, and when they would be visited by many inhabitants of the other world. Wow. The closest they ever will, life and death. Okay. <laughs> bon festival in Japan. At the time, the people believed that, this, that the souls returning to the physical world would go into people's houses or possess people to do bad things. This, the souls of people that died, then I'm guessing. So, people who died during uh, uh, so in the Bond Festival in Japan, or maybe she's talking about the Celts still. The people that die between October and November in that interval, they, re they return to the physical world and maybe into people's houses to possess people to do bad things. I see. Hmm. So, in order to avoid harm to them, the people invented protective rituals. Is the scorpion charm one of them? 
Scorpions. One of those was to imitate creepy monsters and scare the souls instead, which was apparently a way to avoid being possessed. Okay. And that's where Halloween came from? Hmm. ほんまやな。え、ててちゅう。わしもハロウィンにそないな言われがあるなんて知らんかったわ。え、ひひひでよしてユーシンクアイノヘロウィンズヒストリー。あ、ノ。ダッツクール。クールファンファクトエア。し
言われてみりゃ10月ってのは季節的にもいろいろ節目って気がするぜ I guess you know we go from we go from、uh, fall slowly into winter 日本の4月のちょうど反対側だもんな It's exactly the start of the year to Japan's April Hey I'm recording this in April you know <laughs> It's April right now Woo October is on the other side. Did I start the series in October? No, I think I started the series in November. I think. But close enough. October? We're in April right now. All this, all the other side of the, 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 the month. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah, we're in April right now. That's that's crazy. It's been over these six months already since, since October. That means it's been what?、Well, That means it's been five months since, since I uploaded the first part of this, this, of episode one of this. However, I did upload the first part and record the first part. I did go about three weeks or something before, I, or over, over a month actually, because I finished Final Fantasy at the time, Final Fantasy X. So I think I, I waited over a month and then I uploaded the second part and then I waited another three weeks and then I started just. Binge, or I say binge reading, but uploading once every day and then properly finish up episode one of this. So now we're here in episode two. It's April right now as I'm recording this. this as I'm uploading this, it'll also be, still be April. So, yay! <laughs> okay, place to mark it. So, <laughs> then. Uh, they held a coven. And reward them? So, witches are, are entire, entirely separate beings from spirits. And then, okay, so there's witches, there's spirits, there's demons, and then there's souls. A lot to keep up with here. <laughs> a lot to keep up with. A lot of. Supernatural stuff to keep up with. Hopefully, I can, I can, my head can, can, can get this around it. Can get this information. Alright. They held a coven called the Sabbat. Halloween no Kaso wa, Muko kara kuru kakujin tachi no moho. Sumari, Karera ni okashi o hodokos no wa, Ichinen no shukakue no kansha no kimochi ga atte mo ii wake da ne. So the kids go in Halloween costumes as imitation of the visit from the other side. And then they should be, be, the kids should be thanked for the yearly harvest. And then you give, but you giving the kids or, or people going trick or treat candy just means that you are the witch of the story, then, right? <laughs> I'm still trying to think how does this correlate to Beatrice? <laughs> How does this witch giving spirits a blessing? You mean how you mean how Beatrice rewarded Shannon and let her be along with George, which is what she always wanted? Maybe it has something to do with that, along those lines? Just like George Oni chan says. Tsumari Halloween wa kono yo to ano yo no kouryu no aru jiki ってわけなんだな Intermingle. それでつまり魔女たちにとってはそういう世界の客人たちと交流できる大切な機会だったとそう言いたいわけか Is a time when this world and that world intermingle. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I've never seen it that way. <laughs> I don't know, I've always just seen it. Alright, let's be scary because fear is a part of humans and we should embrace fear. And,、uh, you know, it's okay to feel fear that makes us human. St that's how I've always just kind of seen Halloween. Whatever. Watch a scary movie. Cool. Or something, if you want. I don't know. I didn't celebrate it too deeply, to be fair, so I don't know everything. But, you know, yeah. Um. For, it's a pressure opportunity for witches to interact with visitors from that world. Is that what you want to say?、Mm. Okay. God damn it, I pressed the wrong button again. 
Oops. All right, we're back. Beatrice, here we go. Match for Beatrice. Yeah. Vigorous and prosperous. All right. Now, now we're getting the mention of demons. Those are not spirits. Those are demons. Those are not souls. Those are demons. I'm sure Beatrice will come to you. Yeah, she'll come back time. I know. I know for a fact. We'll eat the marshmallow candies together. She'll take me to the golden land with her. Okay. The secrets of runes. Draw magic circles. Learn magic spells. Magical songs. You won it all. Oh, Rosa. Yep. Here comes Eva. Eva, don't you mess with Rosa. Just seeing her makes me happy, and and you're you're gonna mess with her, aren't you? You're gonna you're gonna be like, oh, how could you let your daughter be into witches? Uh, look at my George, how much better he's doing. Come on, Eva, not not to Rosa, not like this. Yeah, okay. She's saying, oh, it's best for kids to have dreams. <laughs> your, your your kid sucks, by the way. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, classic Eva. Eva! Stop it! Stop it! You know under those words. You know what she's saying under those words. You know what she is implying with that. Oh, it's okay for kids to have dreams. By the way, how old is Maria? Nine? <laughs> she's nine. Man, that's, that's gonna be embarrassing as a mother, but I'm not gonna say it out loud, you know what I mean, right? Your, your daughter is nine, and she's acting like this, talking about wanting to be a witch. <laughs> My church could never. <laughs> LOL. Woo. That's what, the, yeah, that, we, know, we know her intent. We know what she means. Maria. That's enough of that topic. Yeah, Kid is saying, ah, it's fine, it's fine, ah, it's fine, but we all know what Eva meant. It's a dream that won't end, a girl has one time on another. Does that, you too, Kirie? Dude, I'm just imagining a little kid, Kirie, nine-year-old Kirie, going, I wanna be a witch! <laughs> I'm just imagining that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's 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 just so weird. It's so weird to, to imagine adult and I feel like mature people acting like that. So weird. Oh. She's nine. Ah, don't slap her this time. Don't slap her this time. Enough slapping. You'll slap her later anyway. So enough slapping for now, okay? Rosa scolded Maria, trying to shut her up before her cheeky discussion about black magic earned her the snickers of the relatives. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Battler doesn't recognize her name. This is definitely happening before Battler and, and Beatrice's game started. Unless this is some Higurashi crap where they're in another fragment of another universe or something. This is before the events of episode 1 and this is before Beatrice and Battler challenge each other, I guess. Each other, I guess. Again, unless some other shenanigans are going on, is going on. Battler had been gone for six years and had completely forgotten about the legend of the Rock and Jima Witch. However, when he said that he didn't know, he didn't know Beatrice's name, Maris' mood, which had been so bright until just now, became sour in an instant. How dare you not know Beatrice! When he saw that, Battler immediately remembered that it was the name of the witch of this island, but the damage had been done. 
Until Maria's mood improved, many mysterious and fabulous episodes regarding the Golden Witch were drilled into his brain. Alright. もう吉野さんマリア。ありがとうね、バトラ君。お話に付き合ってくれて。ありがとうね、バトラ君。お話に付き合ってくれて。ありがとうね、バトラ君。お話に付き合ってくれて。ありがとうね、バトラ君。お
As Rosa cursed, she twisted Mari's ear up. Ah, that's enough. That's enough with the ear. I know it hurts. That's why I'm, I know from experience that's enough. <laughs> Making it seem like he was going to snap off. <laughs> ah, that's gonna hurt. Dude, that's gonna hurt. Ah, ouchie, ouchie, ouch. I mean, slaps. Slaps hurt too. I know that, but. Eee. An expression of anguish spread across Muddy's face, and she stood on her tiptoes as though her life depending on it, depended on it, trying to soften the pain on the ear that was being pulled. <sighs> ah. You know, we'll just keep reading. Enough, 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 Rosa, 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 enough, 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 enough. Enough, 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 enough. Rosa suddenly stole the candy that Maria had been holding in her hand. <sighs> okay. Okay. Oh no, uh, we, are, we heard what she did. We heard it. I he I heard it from the from the sound effects. I know exactly what she did. I didn't have to read this, but I guess I do. To make you make it worse, fine. What did she do? And she threw it on the ground and stepped it on it over and over. Oh my god! At least let her have the candy. You can't let her do that much. Ah, let her have the candy at least. To Maria, it was supposed to be proof of her memory of that span of time, however brief when she had enjoyed going shopping with her mother. <sighs> wow, that bond was broken really quickly, huh? Wow. That's a... that's a... Hmm. But it was being trampled by that very same mother. It, it, does Maria think that she's being controlled by a, by a witch or something again? By an evil witch? Is that what's going on through Maria's head now again? Say, oh, mother, come back to me. Come back to me. It was as though a brand was being pushed against Maria's eyes, leaving a mark that couldn't be erased. Hmm. <laughs> disgusting, disgusting. <sighs> She struck Maria's head over and over again with her aw oh, with her palm as she spoke. <sighs> she didn't hit Maria's face. Because the red swelling would stand out. What? I did not. I did not want to see this. I did not want to see this. You know, I guess if I'm gonna love a character, I gotta love both their good sides and their bad sides. No, no matter, no matter how bad their bad sides could be, we we, we gotta we gotta go along with this, <laughs> okay? Because the red swelling would stand out. Oh. Maria closed her eyes tightly, patiently bearing her mother's violence. No, that wasn't quite it. <laughs> She's hoping that, because yeah, like I said, Maria thinks that Rosa's being corrupted by some witches to do this, but her real mother would never actually hurt her. Uh, this is such a, this is such a freaking, this is just sad to see, man. Save me, mama. Beat the bad witch, yep. She thinks she's being taken over by a bad witch. She kept bearing it, muttering that over and over. Another big slap. You can hear the sound effects makes it worse because you can hear her slapping her head over and over. I told you to stop. I told you to stop saying 
witch. You know, this, that's how it sounds like, and it sucks. And again. And again. And she stuttered like three more times there. Holy crap. Is her head okay at this point? How often does she get slapped like this? Holy crap. Alright, guys, listen. I ain't want to question parenting, but... Would you guys call this abuse? I'm not gonna... I'm not, I, listen. I'm not gonna say yes or no. I just want to know your opinions. <laughs> as far as right as of right now. If, you, if you've already read the whole visual novel and and know what's gonna happen. Or, or, or know more of the reasoning behind this, right? The explanations behind this, whatever. But as of right now, do you... Do you w w the, fr from from the early context i'm sure we don't have the full context of what's going on here right the full explanation and context but w would you out of what we've seen so far especially if you're someone like me who's reading into this blind right now would you say this is abuse i i ain't gonna say yes or no right now i, I you know what i'm not gonna be the one to say it I, and i you know I, I i i will actually i'll you know what? i'll i'll I'll, 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 I won't say it. I, I won't say it. I will not. I will. I, will, I won't. Rosa's shoulders shook as she breathed, tired from hitting. That's that's when you know it's bad, when she's literally tired from from hitting. You know, like I feel like there should never be. Maybe that's just me. But should there ever be a point where you've hit your kid, own kid, so much that you're literally tired from hitting? Should that, uh, should that, breathing so hard, should there ever be a, that, a point where it's that bad? Maria gasps her hands together, withstanding it, hoping her mother would come back quickly. I don't really get this though. And then you can just stand there mumbling about witches and Halloween forever. I don't really get this. So Rosa lets her stay there. No, that doesn't make sense. Is that really how it went? Didn't Rosa let her stay there because of the the flower? Is the timeline behaving different or is that just me? Because I definitely don't remember them talk about Halloween at all. That's for one thing. I just assumed that was an, another topic that they talked about that wasn't talked about it in episode 1 because they want to keep it for now. But now it feels like the actual events of episode 1 is starting to change a bit. Right? The, the reason why Maria slapped... What, slapped... Maria... Rosa, the reason why Rosa slapped Maria in episode 1 was not because of Halloween and witches. It was because she wouldn't let go of the rose. And, oh, no, no, no. It was because the rose wasn't there anymore and she refused to leave when she came back. So maybe the timeline is still fine right now. Maybe then they go wherever and, you know, family business continues. And then Rosa goes outside and sees that Maria is refusing to leave because she, the flower disappeared. That The one that George put up, up candy wrapping around. And that, and then she slaps her again. So does that mean Rosa slaps her at least three times in the same day? Is that how the timeline went? She slapped her b d during the tra in the train station, then again here, and then again later on when Maria doesn't find the flower that this is supposed to be a candy wrapper around. Hmm. After throwing those words at Maria, Rosa went off towards the guest house, leaving Maria behind. Mm. She went off towards the guest house, you say. Okay. Okay. And yeah, that's the stomped candy, man. Maria, unable to even remember that it was alright to cry, aww, kept staring down at the trampled, unrecognizable jack-o'-lantern candy. Could have at least let her have the candy. Mm. Mm. 
Hmm. Okay. Ara Rosa, doko itte ta no? I think we're going to end it there, y'all. I think we are we are going to end it there with that little session. No music playing right now. I think this is a good chill place to stop. Uh, not not uh, we're not gonna end this off in a in a good mood. At least at the start of next part, we'll get to see Rosa again, and we'll get we'll get to see her. Possibly being angry with the whole Maria stuff, but at least we'll get to see her not slapping Maria. I think that's 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 a bit better. But yeah, I feel like I kind of I kind of curse myself for <laughs> for wishing Rosa back. I feel like I feel like I, I I put this on myself by wanting Rosa back so much. I got her back, but the visual novel is like, uh, yo, you want you, you told me you wanted her back. Sure, she's back. But she's going to slap, you know, Maria many, many times, and pull her ear, and stomp on her candy. So you get her back, but you get to see this side of Rosa. And I'm here, like, you know what? I can maybe I kind of deserve this for wishing her return so much. Maybe I kind of did. Maybe I do deserve this. I don't know. You know what I do know? I'm gonna end this part there, ladies and gentlemen. Not the greatest of moods to end it off on. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of Imineko when they cry. Uh, I think I will go cry over what's going on between Rose and Maria here. So, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. <sighs> one day, I hope... I hope... One day, hopefully by the end of the visual novel, or whatever it is, Maria and Rose's relationship can be fixed as much as possible. And that they can continue leading a good life together. Um, whether the rumors about Rose are true or not, I just hope that everything goes well with her. Okay. I say this as if as if she she, she hasn't died already, but you guys know that w it's witches and stuff. Okay, the way she died was a natural to begin with. She can come back to the living. I I hope. I, uh, Rosa can continue on living well. I hope. All right, but Eva and Rosa are gonna start talking to each other next part. At this our next part. I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm excited to see a little Eva Rosa conversation. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys then when they uh, when they start discussing with each other. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed reading it. I should say, instead of saying that, I should say I hope you guys enjoyed watching this more than I enjoyed reading it because it was hard. It was hard reading that portion. Not gonna lie. Um. I did not. I thought what happened in episode one between Maria and Rosa would be the extent of it. Yeah, it got worse. It it got worse in episode two here. So, yeah. I'll meet you guys next time. Uh, more, more retelling from a different perspective of what happened in episode one. I believe in episode one went straight to what Battler and George and Jessica were doing. We didn't stay around to see that slapping happening, but uh, yeah. If I recall correctly, I might be wrong. Maybe the slapping didn't happen at all. But pff, I don't know, y'all. I think maybe we hung out with, with Cross or something at the time. Now that doesn't make sense. Oh, well. I hope you guys enjoyed this anyway. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully we'll have a better mooded, moody part. Next time a more happy part with better, better stuff happening to, you know, Maria and the rest. Right? And her mother. Hopefully. Hopefully it's better, right? I want them to build a good bond together. I don't know about this Golden Land stuff that Maria is talking about, but what I do know is that, yeah, I hope. I hope things end, 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 end well. But okay, I'll see you guys next time for um, more Umineko. We are now on chapter 6, I think, maybe? I could be wrong. But yeah, slowly but surely, we're making progress. Oh, we could be on chapter 5 or something. Whatever. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Alright, y'all. Peace.